Hello there. I don't want to hear the word peace. I don't want to hear the word truce. I don't want to hear the word family. I don't want to hear the word stability. I don't want to hear the word together. I don't want to hear any of those words that recognize that we are going to get this shit back on track because we are going off the rails, ladies and gentlemen. It's wartime. It's wartime, okay? There is no sense that this shit is going to end well and uh, in a coming together, okay? We are entering the final two episodes of The Sopranos, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film shooting here of Sydney Australia absolutely shooting his shot today like I said we are up to the penultimate episode of The Sopranos the entire series this one is titled The Blue Comet I'm gonna get into the reaction we're gonna have some fun with this thing we're gonna absolutely smash it and I can't believe we're already up to this stage let's get into it let's roll the second last time I'm seeing this HBO logo at the beginning intro on YouTube because <laughs> I got the box set ladies and gentlemen that rewatch is gonna be fantastic in my own time I need to get my dad onto it because the box set, he actually got it for himself and he still hasn't watched it. I keep telling him how good the show is. He goes, Dad, I know it's good. I know it's good. I just need to find time to watch it. Woohoo! What are you doing? Scared the piss oh out of Oh my gosh. Some things. You don't get into over the phone. Got it. Lorraine's a mess. Watch out for Spencer. Who? Oh. The fucking Toy Terry is a ship machine. This man about to get the Ralphie treatment. A visitor so in his own home like this with Sil? Yep. Yeah. Not the dog, too. Why does that look like AIDS dog, too? Everyone with those shoes getting violated. Can we talk about how Sil came into the frame right there? As soon as he approached the frame, I'm like, yeah, this guy's getting whacked. My guy had, like like, like a comment said in the Tony episode when he killed Christopher, um, he, like he said in, uh, in Kennedy and Heidi, um, he, had, he came in and looked like black. Like, the jaws shark black. Like, he, the bags under his eyes, he looked like he had death in him. Like, he, yeah, like he only saw black. Like, the way he came into frame right there. Take a walk in there. Fuck you waiting for. Get lost. Historically, Carmine always said the Sopranos are nothing more than a glorified crew. There we go. Plain and simple. We decapitate and we do business with whatever's left. Forget Coco, forget Fat Dom, who goes over to Jersey and never comes back. Forget my brother Billy. Phil, Phil, that's not what I'm saying at all. Anthony Soprano has no respect for this thing. Brother, look who's talking! Can. Not really. He's a guy who stepped over his own uncle to grab the big seat. Or maybe... His father's brother. Did you forget Please, that his sir, uncle tried to put a hit on him? I let him come to the hospital last Christmas, and I took his fat fucking hand in friendship. Philly, you had a heart attack. Listen to me. They make anybody and everybody over there. And the way that they do it, it's all fucked up. Guys don't get their finger pricked. There's no sword and gun on the table. Phil. No, Al. Either it has meaning or no meaning. And the veto thing. The man harbors a faggot. It's true. Five fucking families. And we got this other pygmy thing over in Jersey. There's no scraps in my scrapbook. But there's a closet. Make it happen. And you came out of that closet, boy. Oh my gosh. Dead bodies. Yep. If that's not foreshadowing the impending, you know, doom that's coming, there's going to be lots of bodies, baby. AJ? Jesus. So you would say he's responding to the therapy? Well, we don't do traditional therapy per se. Kids in crisis mostly need an environment of calm, no stresses. By the way, do you want this or I can pop it in the mail? 
I, I just want to say you guys on the Kennedy and Heidi comment section absolutely nailed it. I, I don't think I've ever had a better comment section in terms of like the breakdown of that episode, in terms of you guys agreeing with what I said, me hitting the nail on the head, you guys adding additional thoughts to what I had said in the episode, things I had missed in terms of like the um the cleaver hat and how deep that goes. And back to the first episode of Chris wearing a hat, um, the cleaver sort of um itself, the machete, you know, how that goes back um to Tony's father taking the finger off when he first first um saw that in the flashbacks like it's just there was so much that episode that went on and you guys broke it down fantastically and i gotta thank you guys for that just one more week of this 2200 a fucking day damn that's expensive Oh, he playing the 360, baby. One of the greatest consoles of all time. You gotta, you gotta give it for the show for showing a cartoon with dead bodies because that's a prelude of what's to come, baby. The bodies have stacked up and they're gonna continue stacking up. Believe this fucking letter. End times, huh? End of times indeed. Turn. How's the anti-terror going? Great. If you don't like sleeping, eating, or seeing your kids. Think Roosevelt told Vito Genovese where Hitler was holed up? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Remember that thing I told you about that was supposed to happen about a year ago? Your problem? Brooklyn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's on again, possibly. You. Maybe people close to you. If it was real solid, you would have been warned officially by the Newark office. But my colleague in Brooklyn, the one with the collaborator, the snitches implying the wheels have already been set in motion. Implying? Come on, we gotta act on implying in these times. <laughs> we gotta act on implying in these times. I swear that Hollywood versus Fuck Lewis you, thing has been up for ages. Christopher fell off her shoes last night. Had to call an ambulance. What happened? I didn't want to overload you with AJ in the hospital. I don't want to hear that. Go. Bert let me know the other night. He's been playing both sides of the fence with New York. Bert? Measures were taken. Bert wasn't speaking for just himself. The guys are getting squeezed hard to sway them towards new management. They thought you'd be a part of it. And he got an answer. Loyal to the cause. You gotta love how the rule book. My hope is maybe now Phil gets the message. You know? We can talk this shit through. Hey, I said don't say that word! Talk this shit through? Really? But we're past that stage. Talking about Phil. We got a hit first. Oh, that transition. This all dovetails with other information. I that transition from the Bing, the Vesuvios. We got a hit first. Oh. Oh. And this all dovetails with other information I got that this cocksucker already has a target on my back. It's a big move. Listen, all cards are off the table. Like. Buddha. When he stuck you with the tab for Vito Jr., I said let it go. Obviously, the truth is, a fuck like Phil, appeasement don't work. I like this guy. He's old school. You know, he tried to convince Phil to have a sit down, have a talk, play by the rule book. Within a tight time frame, 24 hours. So there's no chance for them to hit back. Top three guys. Paulie Gattieri? No, management. Tony Soprano, obviously. Plus Silvio Dante, and we think Bobby Bacchieri. That Mortadella's number three? 
Used to be Junior Soprano's driver. And you used to sell laser printers out the back of your Crown Vic. I love how... You really slept. Obviously, we have the interchanging cuts with the New York meetings, the New Jersey meetings, you know, and they both have the sort of same objective. It's a situation of who has the better information. And I feel like with Agent Harris on Tony's side, Tony might have a little bit of the edge, a little bit of the advantage. But it could be a situation where one team might get to another guy first and another team might get to another guy first. And it's just a, it's just a matter of, like, who cleans out everyone else first? <laughs> like, yeah. Who's the sleep? You want some oatmeal? I'll make some. I can't find my belt. Well, it must be up there somewhere. What? You hit it? Yeah, I'll make the real thing. You let me know when it's ready? Sure. Everyone is wearing black this you know, episode. Got... Everyone that sort of has that a close encounter with death or like pride. To commit suicide or has killed individuals. Sylvia wearing black, Tony wearing black, AJ wearing black. Dark times, baby. End of times, like Agent Harris said. The white shoes again. Polish them, Sylvia. Hey, Tony. Regarding our friend with the gray hair, I thought about it. I want you to call Italy, get some cousins of ours over. <laughs> Who you want to run the thing? Who do you? Got it. Gotta get some tires for Camilla's car. Yo, Tony calling the Avengers here, man. <laughs> the Hi. Italian Avengers. Oh, oh, Jennifer's our resident Italian wine expert. <laughs> They're gonna say to Phil Kometiki Army, bro. <laughs> Jesus, her love life. The girl she was involved with, Cecily. She's now having a torrid pen and paper relationship with an armed robber in Attica. What is this fascination with criminals? Rescue is, fantasy. Is this a therapist dinner here? Well, I'm worried for Cecily, so I googled any new stuff on sociopathic personalities. Apparently, the talking cure actually helps them become better criminals. Bro, it was I fascinating. This uh, the study was by um, Yoshelson. Yo, I, I, I studies are turn around every few years. Li listen, I, I, this could be a coincidence, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past Elliot to have sort of um nudged this girl here at the top of the table to talk about this sociopathic behaviors just to get to Melfi and remind her that it just wasn't coming from me. Everyone else is, you know, this is the talk of the town and the therapy world about um you know administering therapy to sociopaths. Like I don't know if she just brought it out of the blue, but I just feel like I feel like you know Elliot might have initiated this with the girl or you know nudged her to bring it up in convo i'm, I'm not putting it past this rick moranus looking ass motherfucker elliot is a little sly one okay this other i think it was robert hare suggested look at him actually quite glibly engage on key issues like mother family i seem to remember that from residency i know that body language i know that body language uh, who's a true sociopath did you put her up to this? She just happened to mention this study? Who, me? Everything okay down there? I don't know. The motherfucking fucking boss of these reactions! She's blowing us off. You just can't resist rubbing my face in it. I feel like we should change the subject. <clears throat> I only suggested you reevaluate your work with Lead Belly or be prepared to deal with moral and possibly legal consequences. Uh, Lead Belly? Who's that? Come on. The answer is a female opera singer and gangster. Da 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 da. da, da, da. Hey, hey. Soprano. Patient client privilege. Tony Soprano? He's your patient? Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Jesus Christ. That's a low yeah, blow, chill man. Chill out. We're among friends. We're all professionals. Hey, these guys stabbing at each other in the uh, back like the New York and New Jersey. All Italians have big noses. If I had made that joke about other groups represented at this table, I would be called a bigot. I meant Italian Reds. Still, it must be fascinating work. It is. You know, I love that callback this episode 
um, I think I can't remember which season it was, and you guys will know what I'm talking about. Remember, we had those family dinner scenes with Tony, his family. Then we juxtaposed that with Melfi. We started getting a little bit of insight into Melfi's home life. I think it was with Richard, her kids, and their view of the Italian um, sort of culture and lifestyle. Because we had like a conversation with Tony, his family, and dinner about like Italians, what it means to be Italian, where they come from, and we juxtaposed that with sort of like the, um, uh, like you know. Um, Melfi's family and obviously you have like sort of like a, a, a mafia members mindset and approach to life in America and then obviously you had Melfi's side of things and that really reminded me of that again um, but obviously this was a therapy session and juxtaposed like you know how the mafia you know like these guys are stabbing each other in the back just as like the mafia is planning to these guys are doing it in plain sight like <laughs> I'm rooting for New Jersey by the way I'm sorry New York like Metro Boomin said, pick a side and we don't trust you. I'm picking a side. If I had to pick a side. Have a seat. Morals are thrown out. Like whatever morals we had here. Like whatever time. Calls were made to the Zips. They're coming over from Naples. You contact the guy to contact the guys. Phil's at his gomadas every Friday night. Do you know about this? What? What kind of question is that? Watch your fat fucking mouth. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What are you concerned about? I lived through the 70s by the skin of my nuts when the Columbos were going at it. There ain't a bigger cocksucker than Phil Leotardo. <laughs> I just want to make sure somebody knows there could be a line of Cazzarellis a mile long. Duly noted. So there's no problem then. Damn, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby should have just stayed Uncle Phil. Uh, um, he should have stayed as Uncle Jim's driver, man. The criminal personality. Oh, is it the same guys that whacked um, the other individual at his house? This is going to be an interesting therapy session here. And I notice, has the statue of the woman been removed? Here we go. Into orbit, the blue comet. <laughs> Blue, blue steak, blue marble steak. <laughs> Anthony. It's only a clear a year around here. <laughs> I don't mean to pry yet. Uh... <laughs> I'm asking because uh, Meadow well, I told you she's taking pre-med classes well she's not going to be a doctor she told us it's kind of sad ain't it helping sick babies babies Change again heart bothers you my mother too much more than me I mean, all that worry. Which private school and Columbia University and this and that. And in the end, she'll get married, squeeze out some kids. After what, a couple of years in the workforce? I'm still working. Yeah, but you're divorced. Oh, whatever. Well, law, that's what she's taking up. And I told Camilla, it's not the end of the world. Since she's interested in uh, civil rights, Muslims, and Blacks and that and a dime. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Hopefully she'll wind up at a big firm. White collar crime. Just, you know, Dr. Soprano. Sounds nice. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> I think Melfi resents that. <laughs> Your parents must have been very proud. I think so. Look at all the people like me you've helped. Helped. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the visual cues, that, like those words that, you know, David Chase made them stick out on the paper when Melfi was reading. You know, we've had criminal, we've had baby, we've had, um, we've had crimes, and then, yeah, we have help now. <laughs> you human suffering in this world, you've done something important. Like those people who are trying to help my son. $2,000 a day in that place, but if it helps... 
And as you know, my plumber's union insurance only covers 10% of mental. It's really hurting, AJ. And you? Although maybe, uh, you know, you know what? Forget his hurts. Maybe I should have just... Put your shoe up his ass? Yeah. Yo, Melfi yeah, being cold frankly. this session. Cold. Cold. Look at that look on her face. Look at that look. We talked about it. She ain't even making eye contact. Anyway, Carmella. Molly coddled him. My old man. Are you a know? shining example for the huge collection of wingtips and loafers that must be lodged up your lower bowel? She's rehearsed. She's rehearsed it, man. Is it because I said that about being divorced? You were saying? He's my only son. He's young. Most of the time they pull out of this. Yeah, she I've been depressed for years. What if he don't pull out? So the boy who never cared about anything now cares about too much. Yo, where was this energy? Where was this energy? My daughter, like all females, ultimately somehow disappoints. I didn't say that. Oh. What's with the tone? He playing the Uno reverse card, bro. She woke up and chose violence today. Glad I'm taking it on the chin. Maybe you're projecting hostile feelings. Bullshit. She ain't letting him he play the emotional card here. Replay. You'd see it in two seconds. Well, we don't have instant replay. I know that. It's crazy. You sound like my fucking wife. Your fucking wife? You know what I mean. The Departures magazine out there. Did you give any thought at all to someone else who might want to read it before you tore out the entire page? What? How did she know it's that? It's not the first time you've defaced my reading materials. Yo, she, she got that, huh? extra hearing. I'll you got that, that shit out of daredevil hearing. Time. They're a mess. I try to read them. I don't think I can help you. I'll change them. Bring in some new shit. I mean therapeutically. After six seasons and 20 about? episodes, we say this. I've only missed three appointments since we had that heart-to-heart. -heart. The new big thing these days is called psychodynamic therapy, combined with anaphronel. Who? Oh? A medication. There's a doctor in Bloomfield you could see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You whoa, could whoa. see. Ah! What the fuck is this? You're uh, firing me because I defaced your Departures magazine? I'm giving you my considered medical opinion. Okay. I should have asked you for the steak recipe. <laughs> and missing sessions, unfortunately, is part of my condition. What do you know about your condition? You miss appointments because you don't give a shit about commitments, about what I do, about the body of work that's gone into building up this science. Go ahead. Tell me again I sound like your wife. What the shoe fits. Other. We're making progress. It's been seven years. Do you want some names? Okay, listen, I'm going to tell you something, and you're not going to like it, but we can say anything. Go there, right? ahead. I'm, I'm choking this all up to female menopausal situations. You're not my gynecologist. Well, you don't oh, need a gynecologist to know which way the wind blows. No, nah, Lord. Let's chill out, bro. One's firing an M4, so one's firing an AK. Shot for shot. You're telling me, after all this time, after everything we've shared in here, you're cutting me loose just as my son got out of the hospital for trying to kill himself? Since you are in crisis, I don't want to waste your time. You know, I gotta be fucking honest. As a doctor, I think what you're doing is immoral. Damn. The parches. <laughs> you just gotta. So is that it? Ends not with a bang, but a whimper in therapy? I guess we've closed the door on that chapter. I, li I like to um, analyze that scene right there in terms of like, you know when Tony usually has his rants at Melfi 
And Tony would usually be displayed, and I've said it time and time in this show, as this Hulk-like presence. He'd take up a lot of the frame and he'd look big in the frame. But right there, and he'd tower over Melfi. We've seen it before. We've seen him get close up and personal with Melfi and yell at her. And she's had to like, you know, um, like tight, like she, you'd see her like, obviously try to hold her emotions in and hold her fear in um but right there she really stood up for her, herself she really stood up to the rottweiler she stood up for that dog she had no fear from that dog she had no fear from that bear and it goes back to the employee of the month episode you know that's the dog that sort of um she could have called upon for help to save her but she she kicked that dog out of the house man i disowned that stray <laughs> um but i want to say right there when melfi stood up and towered over tony i love how they use that sort of like low angle shot um and melfi almost look as broad and big as tony in that suit if, if if that makes sense like when she stood up and towered over tony right there um and stood her ground firm um she really you know um uh stamped her authority um on tony and then when tony stood up i love how they instead of started using sort of like the low angle shots from tony or like the high angle shots to uh, from the over the shoulder towering over melty um they used like medium long shots or medium close-up shots to make tony smaller within the frame to almost see as if him and melfi on a level playing field and she's not afraid to back down from him they're seeing eye to eye and i love that i love that i love how you know, Melfi wasn't afraid right there um, to make that decision and stood up to Tony. And basically, uh, you know what? You can do whatever you want. I have, I'm not fearful of you. I think it was this shot one here, right? This one. Wait, well, I just want to see. Yeah, this one where she stood up. And the the, the line delivery is cold. We're making progress. Seven years. See, when she stood up here, and you sort of have that sort of lowish angle shot of Melfi over Tony um, from beneath his shoulder, she looks broad. She looks big. She almost looks as if like this is early Tony Soprano towering over Melfi. She has that cold look. She's the teacher now. She's not, um, you know, she's disciplining a child here. It's almost as if Tony was begging for her to stay as well. And I like that. I like that. Some great framing here this episode as well with characters through doors or through sort of like hallways and things like that where they narrow the frame through the position of doors and stuff like that. You saw it Tony in the alleyway. You saw it with um, Agent Harris through the um, uh, the butchery and now Melfi with her office. Are these... Yeah, these are the same Italians that were on the plane back, yeah? Old reliable. <laughs> Is this the end of Phil Leotardo? I wouldn't be surprised if Phil's got back up here. Like, they know tensions between the two sides are higher than ever. And I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are on watch as well. DHL. This is not Phil. This is not Phil. He's limping. For senior. Oh no, oh no, oh no. This is the oh Bro, bro. Oh my No, oh my god. Oh oh my god. No, you motherfuckers. How how is that can you guys look at a oh this is mistaken identity, and they left the gun there. Oh my! That's an identified. Oh my gosh! That's an unidentified white male right there, man. Ukraino. Isso parlava l'Ukraina. O sacco perché cugina ma sa casai con un uaione loca. No, this guy's so careless, man. He was careless when Chris approached him. He was. Oh, this is going to come back on Patsy, isn't it? Yeah, it's done. I think the love interest got in the way, though. Couldn't be helped, apparently. You ever see Phil with the Guma? Once, maybe. Why? Can you talk to her in Ukrainian? Ukrainian? Fuck the I know. See, that's a little bit of doubt. I gotta go.
Holy. It's done. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait till they see Phil walk in on the joint or Butch. There they are. So, Med was in here with Patrick Parisi? Yeah. We are very happy. Very happy. Is it true what she said? She's quitting pre med? Yes, thank God. Yeah. We are so relieved. You know, with age and. Uh... I mean, it's not just that. I don't know one doctor who was advising his children to go into medicine. Between the uh, the insurance companies over their shoulder, the hospitals are making cutbacks. She'd have been good at it, though, Med. Always intellectually curious, even as a. <laughs> Does compassion come naturally to her? Patience? I'm not so sure. Bro, what are you talking we're about? Not oh. So what is she gonna do now? Why are we? Well, law. Oh. Need Constitutional it. law. Oh. Pick up your daughter, oh. man. And what about AJ? How's he doing? Talk her up. Don't, don't talk good. her down. He's good. Good. Tom, you know who's in tonight? Man genius. It's the Jets coach, sweetie. I should go say hello. Put it all on the Jets. <laughs> So Med and Patrick Parisi? Parisi? A little awkward though, maybe. Patsy still works for Tony? He's an underling? Yeah, hey, oh, Cupid's dart lands. <laughs> I'm gonna send some limoncellos over in celebration. Great. I f bro, these two want to go at it. I, I can't tell. You know when you can just sense the awkwardness with women? That's 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 one interaction right there. I'm like. Thank you. Thank you. At least they found out. At least they didn't find out some other way. Like, like a surprise. Like Phil coming up like freaking Two-Face into the Dark Knight and be like, Yo, it's me. Harvey Dent. I'm still alive. Don't Flip cry. the coin. Look, You're look, dead. Don't cry. Babies cry. Come around here to take Nika. Is he? Emptying the pool, huh? Yeah, I thought I was like, is he draining the pool? Yeah. Another precaution for AJ potentially, like Carmella um, hiding do? the belt. Had a call from Mario Diaco. Who's that? Uncle June's accountant. The one with the artificial voice box says he's been trying to reach you for two weeks. I know, Tony. But Jesus, those fucking places are snake pit. But then I'll make some new friends. I understand. He's dead to me. You gonna bail him out? We all have that kind of money. We, we contribute. Bobby feels, you know. Right. And you got a lot of balls coming to me. And as for your husband, Janice, exile on Main Street. Don't say that. You trust the guy, you bring him along. And for what? They feel sorry for Junior? Did I hear the... Oh, no. I thought I heard the ducks again. It was the crows, maybe. And the ducks don't have a home anymore. <laughs> you just know what's going to happen. Oh, bad news. Now Phil's going to double down. He going he gonna to stay extra well, he safe. He said he wants it known. It's on him. Takes full responsibility. Yeah, but they didn't do nothing. Shit. Yeah. Nobody. I mean, nobody knows where the fuck Phil is. Four or five days now. So we never really had a shot at him. No pun intended. See, this is why I think if it ever came down to a war between... Actually, now that I think about it, someone asked this on stream. If it came down to a fist fight between Tony and Walter White, Walter White's not making it out. He's dying. But if it came to it became to a war, I just feel like Walter White would outsmart all these fools. If, like, a simple thing like that and they can't call the shots or, like, they can't, you know, pinpoint a location on one of the main bosses in New York and use their sources wisely, yeah, yeah these guys were cooked by Walter... No pun intended, too. <laughs> but the house of Florida. I had beans since somebody passed. House is all shut it up. He put everything in place. His moves on us. He goes into hiding. Waits it out. Go on to ground, they call it. Hope. What a what a bitch it's move fresh. from the boss. You tell everybody. Got it. In the meantime, we keep trying. Get a 20 on Phil. 
You know what I want to say as well? Um, I said this, and obviously The Sopranos was influenced... Um, no, sorry, The Sopranos had such an influence on the making of Breaking Bad. Um, I want to say towards the end of Breaking Bad, it almost had that post-apocalyptic feel. It almost has, like, as if there was no sense of direction like anything could happen you don't know what the characters were going to do you don't know where everything's going to end up and this is a similar situation here it's almost as if everything is just chaotic everything is out of place like i said at the beginning of the episode there's no stability whatsoever um there's no coming together of um there's no meeting of the minds with the two groups there's no sort of inclination um as to um what the rule book is um it's like the same thing with the wire sometimes you got to play the game but sometimes the game doesn't need to be played with violence but at this point it's just violence everyone is seeing red buffy style like that's the only option here it's just violence 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 and the game has gone out of whack like all the pieces on the chessboard have just been knocked off there's like only one option now <laughs> and it's a sad ending to the soprano it's almost as if like oh no Oh no, he didn't get the warning call. Oh no, Bobby just picking up some, you know. Beautiful. And you never see a blue comet in that condition. Oh. I mean, look at the coaches. Every window still lights up. The train. That train still ran New York to AC, Atlantic City, be a much different place today. Better class of people, I suppose. Who the fuck really knows? My guy's just zoning Still, out from the world. It's nice to think that. Picking up things for his hobby. Imagine, riding in that club car, sipping on a Negroni. They ran the whole set, huh? Well, there's other people interested. Oh, no, nah, Bobby's gone. Bobby's gone. Bobby's gone. Bobby's gone. Bobby's gone. Bobby's gone. I'm going to go for it. Your son will like this, too. Looks fast. He don't care. Oh no, the, the train's gonna go off the rails. Yep, yep. Even the audience is in shock. Even the members of the train station are in shock. And then the Newark symbol as well. Hurry up. That's probably like... Bobby did not deserve that, man. How are you going to be in a hobby shop, man? And you just get taken out with the innocent children there too. Oh, man. That, again, like another Sopranos death scene masterfully crafted. Like, you have the train falling off and going off the rails. You have the Newark symbol and um, Bobby laid out on the table right there. It's almost as if, like, David Chase is saying, the empire is crumbling. The empire is falling. The train is going off the rails. Um, and that's it. There's no, there's no putting this together. The Roman Empire is crumbling and it's going to be different. So, you know, the Roman Empire had their rule. And then eventually they phased out. It fell. Um, and yeah, we know what happened. And that's, that, that's literally right there. And that interchanging cut as well with the little miniature figure of the, the individual, the girl, um, or that woman with like sort of, you know, an Ellie Moses thumbnail like this, um, over her mouth. It's almost as if David Chase is just, um, um, like, you know, representing that shock factor right there. That's the audience right there. You're, you're, you're in shock. You're in awe. And there's more to come of it. Like, be prepared. And I love that. I love that. Like, come on, man. Who said there's no subtext in Sopranos? Get the fuck out of here, man. Get out of here. Yeah, man, that's your bet. I'm going to be working away from the office. I should have this stuff. You make yourself useful? The blue comet as well. The train. I almost thought it was like a space Looking reference. Comet in space. Is that right? Double meaning, triple meaning, triple entendre. All right. And Bobby got caught lacking at his favorite place. That's probably his safe haven, man. Yeah, that's them there. Oh, shit. Yeah, all, all 
cards are off the table. That's it. It's all it's all out war here. Who's got the better shot here? Who's got the better shot? No, Silvio! Patsy, fight back, bro! Silvio taking the licks! Silvio's taking two! Patsy, don't run away! And he's doing a Mikey. He's running into the bush. Oh my god. Silvio! Oh my gosh, it's some Final Destination type shit. Patsy doing a runner, man. Oh my gosh, everything's happening. Everything's... Please tell me Silvio's not there. Come on, man. Silvio, you're fighting. Fighting. Yeah. Wait. Remember pulling up the driveway? You don't know who's going to be there. So, do they... Does Tony know Bobby's gone? Melissa found the memory stick in my okay. product bag that wasn't printed. You remember what a dick this guy was at first? Yeah. <laughs> Tony's got to bunk down in a safe house or something here. Doomsday clock, baby. Bunk her up. Nobody called you? No. What's the matter? Bobby's dead. He's shot. Shell's in the hospital. What happened? Could be several things. That Paris what are you talking about? Just temporarily till we get the situation under control. What does that mean? Calm, help me out here. Don't argue. You mean that they're after you? We should split up. You and the kids go. I'll be somewhere else. Oh my God. Now look, family. How's Phil Leotardo outsmarting man. these guys, I man? I just want to know every night that you're not sitting here out in the open. Where should I go? Where are you going to go? The house you just bought. The estate sale. Go there. Jesus. All right, then a hotel. Then it doesn't fucking matter. <sighs> okay. You all right? It says Shukra Jamai brought nuclear material into the country from Mexico in 2002. Leave us alone, hon. Hang downstairs. Better yet, don't. <laughs> Yo, that empire crumbling down real quick. Like, David, David Chase is giving you no time to process things. We could have been doing anything. Yeah, but what were you doing? Nothing. We're just friends. Story of AJ's life. All right, listen. Come on, sit up. Come on. Bro, I feel like with every second here... Your Uncle Bobby's dead. What? He's dead. He got shot. What do you mean he got shot? Listen to me, and I don't have any time to go into a debate about any of this, okay? And it's important that we all leave for a little while until things settle down. What? Holy fuck. It's just a precaution. I'm gonna be dependent on you to help out your mother. Well, and... help out how? Just do what she asks. You know, chores, tasks, whatever. And don't add to the problem. What do you mean? All right, what the fuck did I do? Don't break her balls, all right? Huh? Just help her. Be the man of the house. Hey, Janice, whatever. Uncle Bobby's dead. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, this is really depressing to me. He was a good guy. I, I was already having so much trouble maintaining. <laughs> yeah, I knew as soon as he started crying. Any signs of weakness? Bag. Now! And you won't need no sandals or fucking resort wear. I'll be waiting downstairs. And the kid just got out of a medical facility and you Agent Harris over here. He just got out of a medical facility and you're doing that to him. Oh my gosh, Janice is gonna nuclear explode here. Like, you know Janice. Oh my god. Like. Oh my god. And the white sneakers the again. They wouldn't give no info on Shell. Yeah, the brother finally fallen back. 
Doctors don't think he'll recover consciousness. Look at the stems on Blondie. <laughs> He's riding high. <laughs> nice to be young, eh? Come on, man. It's up to the men in black. Come on. Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Paulie and Tony. We got this, baby. Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> Come on. Yo, they're staying at 12 Grimmauld Place. Order the Phoenix style. This that 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 type of safe house. What happened to the big muscly muscly guy? The other bold one. Did he put on weight? Like, did he become Humpty Dumpty overnight? It's actually insane, man. I love this. I love the finale they're setting up. I'm gonna bunk down here. Where's Benny, little Benny? Go take care of your wife, that uh, flu. We go to our beats? Ride or die, baby. Yeah. We go to our beats? <laughs> Get some meatballs and sausage, too. A couple of salads. Over the curry. And paper plates, too. We ain't got no chicken. <laughs> and paper plates, too. Oh, man. I thought I was going to end the episode there of him closing the door, similar to Melfi closing the door on him. But the lighting change here, baby. The lighting change. We're only lit by the moon, it seems. Is that the gun Bobby gave him? In the forest? In Soprano Home Movies? He gonna kill him with the Bobby. You probably don't even hear it when it happens, right? There's your friend in there. The wall. <laughs> Yo, he's sleeping with the gun at night, similar to Carmela. Remember, Carmela did that with the gun. You never know who's going to walk through that door. Are you sure we can even sleep now? Can we even get some rest? Oh, come on, man. This is about to be a generational finale. Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? What a fantastic episode of The Sopranos, ladies and gentlemen. Um, listen, lost for words. Lost for words at... You know, the shock factor in that episode, the fact that it's only 48 minutes does not overstay its welcome and everything happens at such a fast pace and you're meant to experience what the characters are feeling. You're not meant to, you know, have time to breathe. You're not even meant to have time to contemplate the decisions that are being made on screen because, um, or you as the viewer are not even meant to have time to contemplate what's happening. Um, you just need to go along with the flow and go along with the rush because that's what's happening at the moment. And... It's actually crazy to see what it's come to. Like the empire crumbling. The empire literally collapsing in front of our eyes and just seeing the state of it. What's left. And I hope it's a situation... Like, like, I feel like it's going to be a situation where there's going to be bodies everywhere on both sides. And it's going to be a situation... AVP Requiem, right? We're going to have the two final bosses standing and they're going to stab each other and take each other out at the same time. The whole thing is going to get nuked. Nuked into orbit, baby. <laughs> like, I just feel like it's going to be a situation of that. I feel like there's going to be no winners here. Um, maybe the kids like Carmella, AJ, Meadow. Like, you never harm the kids. I feel like the kids are a no-go. Um, they're not to be touched, but it's the main members. And it's just, you know, maintaining control and reestablishing um, dominance from one side. Whether it's like New York taking over completely and, you know, setting up in New Jersey and them controlling everything or New Jersey doing it vice versa. So it's going to be interesting. Um... What the finale is going to hold in store for us? Because are you freaking kidding me, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, man. It really, that end right there really reminded me of the 50 Cent quote. Um, What's the song again? I, I forgot. It's from Get Rich or Die Trying. Um, like he talks about talking to God at night. And he talks about having his gun in his palm. I forgot what the quote is. Um, But it's, it's generational. All right? It's generational. And this finale is about to be generational. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, it's been Boiling Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.